right, foresters. Um, our whole thing here at the Food Foresters uh, Homestead is to try to be as sustainable as possible. And our chickens that we've been using for meat have been Cornish Cross. And that's just not really sustainable. So we want to have our own heritage breed chickens for, you know, butchering for meat and for eggs. Well, we've got heritage breed eggs, you know, uh, egg birds that are great. Um, but for meat, we just... You know, we're, we're, we haven't been happy with just the Cornish Cross. So, ordered breast chickens from Breast Farms. Um, we'll put the link down in the description so you guys can check it out. Check it out. I don't know how happy I am with the breast chickens right now. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, they're supposed to be all white. These guys have some black in them. So I think they've been crossed a little bit or mixed up with some of their darker breast chickens, which I want the original breast chickens. So we may end up be going to Green Fire Farms to get the chickens. It's just Green Fire breast chickens are a lot more expensive than breasts, like over twice as much price-wise. But they're the ones that brought the breasts over from France. So they've got the first breeding stock over here. They actually brought two batches of chickens over and uh, that's where most of the breast breeding stock has come from for the American breasts. But we have them right here. We've been having them grow out. This is the guy that's a little sprayed leg. Well, hopefully he'll uh, uh, be able to adjust more now that he'll have yeah. more room. She's got one wonky leg, so we're not too sure. And we think him. we have two roosters. Use y'all's water. Now hold one up. Let's see. Hold this one up, guy, up too. It's a little one. Yeah, that's a little one. Now, just to give you guys some information, these breast birds, they come, they look like regular yellow chicks with the white legs or yellow legs. As they grow, their legs will turn blue. They'll have completely white feathers, and then they'll have a red comb. And the reason why they're called... Um, they originated out of Brest, France. So the red, white, and blue is the same colors as the France, the French, yeah, the French flag. Um, but as you can tell, like this one here, his legs are starting to turn blue. We ordered 10. Unfortunately, we had a few pass, so we are down to, what do we got, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, Actually, and, seven. or seven, yeah, 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 the one, yeah, well, sorry, I'm seven. I'm not too sure about number seven. We're going to keep number seven just because as long as he can still right. walk and still get food and water, then we should be fine. Yeah. He's just going to be a little special. Yeah, he'll be our special chicken. Did you check to make sure the lamp is yeah. on? Okay. No, I, I, I didn't plug in. It's not plugged in yet. Well, we need to check that. We will. Mm -hmm. So, now, the reason why these are not called regular breasts here is because we're in America. So, they call them American breasts because they are bred here in the United States. Now, their meat... Um, is supposed to be marbled. If you finish them right. It, yeah. You're supposed to, in order to get the marbled meat, like beef, they pin them up and they uh, feed them milk-soaked grains. Which, which we may experiment with later. But right now, this is to be our breeding stock. We're not going to be eating any of these. Well, except for maybe the spray leg one once he gets bigger. Mm -hmm, maybe. Because um, we don't want to pass on that genetics. Yeah, 
And then you could tell what we were talking about. See the the black spots. Those are characteristics of the California white, um, yeah. which I already have some of those. I have two of them that are just like that. So I'm wondering if they've got some different genetics mixed, if green, or if uh, they somehow Breast got Farms have got some different genetics mixed in with these guys. Yeah. That's why we might be going ahead and paying the extra money and get more breeding stock from Green Fire because those are the guys that actually brought it over. Mm -hmm. But we'll see how these guys work out. Yeah. A lot of them did have the black dots and have disappeared since yeah. then. So the ones that are left, as you can tell, they still got a little bit of, you know, yellowing on their head. But they've gotten big enough where they're feathered out pretty good. And we got them in the grow out pen. And we do have the barrier. It's the same pen that we used for the uh, yes. for the Cornish Cross and the turkeys when we had the turkeys uh, last season. So this is, um, it's protected by netting here. Um, they can roost if they wanted to, but the roosts are kind of high on that because this is built for turkeys. But we're going to keep them in here uh, for the next couple of weeks. So and then, a yeah, just a little bit bigger. And then we're going to be moving them next to our flock because we got turkeys coming. Yes. <laughs> we have 40 of the broad-breasted turkeys. Yeah. And we are going to be hatching some of our heritage breed turkeys also. But we just want to get, we want to get a lot of, we do a lot of grinding. And uh, I don't think we're going to do a pig this year. So we want to have extra amount of ground turkey mm -hmm. for a turkey sausage and stuff like that. Hi guys. We tied, we tried to uh, correct the, sp the, sprayed le the spread legs on this one but it didn't really take so well he's doing a lot better than what he was when he was littler yeah he's just he sits a lot but he's able to get food and water and that's what matters the most as long as we're able to feed him he can feed himself and get water he's he's good or she we want to give him every chance he's got or she's got whichever it turns out to be Looks like they all found the food. And we got the red light. All right. Later. Hey guys. All right. So we are in with the breast chickens. This morning, um, I have, they're all in there trying to eat. They won't come out. It's a little chilly actually for it being late April. Got a little cold front that came through. So um, it's been about mm, roughly two weeks at least. There they are. <laughs> we are down to five. Yesterday, um, I was coming out to let my chickens, um, let me see, get them in the shot while I'm telling the story. Um, I was coming out to let my chickens out and, um, there we go. <laughs> Anyways, I was going to let my chickens out for the afternoon. I normally go out around noon. And my goat Clyde, when I came back to the area, he was just bellowing. Like, I have never heard him bellow before. I mean, he was doing this. Nah! Nah! <laughs> 
I was like, what in the world? I thought it was acting funny. It was standing on top of his house and everything. So I let the chickens out, and as I'm walking away, he's doing it again. I was like, something's up. So I go back to see what I thought maybe there was something wrong with him. As I got to his pen, I heard this loud squealing. I look over to where this area is here, which we have bird netting, um, as you can tell. A red shoulder hawk was inside the pen. Total panic mode. We've never had that happen. Apparently, from what we gathered from the damage to the netting, it looked like he had dive bombed in and he could not get out. Sometime between 9.30 and 12.15, he was in there. Um, I did not have time to video anything. I went into like full on panic mode because I'm thinking to myself, okay, these chickens are the chickens we are going to be using for both meat and eggs. And um, he had gotten two, ate them in, ate them in the pen. Uh, but during this time, um, <coughs> hello, stupid. <laughs> so during this time, I started calling, I called the non-emergency police. They sent me to animal control. Animal controls then sent me to Florida Wildlife. And they gave me a couple other numbers. Florida Wildlife gave me a couple of numbers to call of people that were licensed for hawks. Y'all, I called at least 10 to 15 numbers nobody answered except for two people one lady was very nice on the phone she was going to get a hold of her boss who was up in Inverness but she did flat out tell me and said that they do not have the equipment to deal with hawks um, a lot of the wildlife rescue or sanctuaries um, whatever whoever I was calling um Two people told me that they are not, they do not handle hawks. Nobody else answered the phone. And then um, one person I called and they start, started saying, text me. So I texted them the information. Um, and then by this time I was frustrated. Two birds were hiding in the corner and they came out to meet. So as I'm standing, um, we have this little fence thing because we're not giving them the whole property yet or the whole, not the whole property, but we're not giving them the whole area yet to roam. They were over in a corner huddled with me. And I was doing my best. I stayed as calm as possible. I didn't make a lot of noise because I know with the hawk, you start doing that, hawk gets uh, act up too. Yeah, hi guys. So, um, by this time I was so frustrated because I was just been told, call this number, do this, you know, go to this website, do this. I called Donald and luckily enough, he was on his last job and, uh, he came home right away when I told him what was going on and um, we managed to put a hole a bigger hole in our netting and we were able to shoo the bird out um, it was a young red uh, red shoulder hawk it had just got it was still it still had a lot of its spots on the feathers but it was um, just getting the, the red color on the shoulders. Um, I'm just frustrated because I was, we were not expecting that. Even though we were prepared for it, 
it still it had to have dive bombed into the netting um it was inexperienced um every time it would squeak <coughs> or i'm sorry not squeak um do it screech i could hear one of the parents in the trees so there was also more there was another red shoulder parent up in the tree and um so the guys are doing fine as you can see and i got one over here um i have we definitely have two roosters um two of them have developed um, some cones the others have not um, so we're hoping that we have two roosters and three hens there's one of them now this guy right here he's very venturous yeah you guys enjoying the weather a little cool and then the other one drinking here Walking around the corner, that's another one with a red cone. <laughs> they all stick together, they're cute. So, hey oh guys, hi, yeah. So Clyde got extra treats yesterday. He got himself um, an hour out, in the, uh, out on the leash, uh, which we don't normally do in the middle of the day. I'd normally wait till it's cooler out. And um, he went ahead and we got him some alfalfa hay, extra alfalfa hay for his alerting me. And I'm really surprised. This is the, like the second time the goats have alerted me to something that is wrong. Um, it's almost like they're watchdogs. <laughs> so, I'm going to show you the hole in the net here. So, give me just a second. Alright. So, here's where the hawk came in. Um, we went ahead and cut another um, piece of bird netting to overlay it. But as you can tell, we cut a huge, we had to cut a huge hole to get it out. Um, and then there's all the birds and they're doing good. As soon as the hawk was gone, it's like they went back to normal. And that's the adventurous one. It's definitely got a cone, so we think he's a male. And then the other one is in here. This guy. The other ones don't have cones yet, but if they do, they're really small, so I think those are female. But what you doing? <laughs> but we did manage to check everybody over. No other injuries. Um, we did find the scene. We lost a female, and um, we also lost um, the one with the sprague legs. So, um, hi, huh, baby. Yeah. But all in all, they're doing good. So we'll just keep you updated as things happen around here. There's the other one. Those two are males. And their feet are turning blue like this guy here the one that's on the brick his feet aren't quite all blue yet